Beam down smoke. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Nalo, and today we're going to be talking about the Shattered Web cases and also the agents included in the new operation. So this video is basically going to be formatted as sort of a discussion, sort of a should you invest in these two types of items, and I'm basically going to be going over the pros and cons of them and sort of trying to give you guys a better idea for yourself personally if you want to buy into them or not. If you're wondering why I waited till now to make this type of video, it's because these are sort of weird items and they're not really easy to talk about and it's not really easy to track down how these are going to do in the future so that's why i waited until now also if you haven't already be sure to click my skin bay link in the description below to get all of the items that you want to invest in at very good prices on a very well designed site that's all i'm going to say about that just make sure you click on the link because it does help out the channel quite a bit all right guys let's begin this video by talking about agents so agents are varied in tier they go all the way up to coverts and they are also able to go on your character itself the only thing they can really change is the look of your view model sort of on your like wrist area which is why they don't really change too much about about your actual appearance to yourself but rather to other players. As of a recent update you can also now apply patches to your agents which can make them look different in game. So with the basic information out of the way let's get down to business. Are agents going to be a good investment? Why or why not? So the main thing with agents here is that they are a brand new concept to CSGO. We don't have anything else that's like agents at all. We don't have anything that doesn't really affect your actual personal view model and your actually your character model itself. Nothing like that has ever existed before and it's really really hard to figure out if these are actually going to be good in the future simply based off of that fact. Now the reason I say that is because if you look back at when skins were first released in CSGO, that means actual weapon skins, no one really knew how they were going to do. A lot of people actually thought they were going to be complete failures and weren't going to add anything to the game at all and weren't going to be worth the hype. Obviously they were wrong and there's now a gigantic community around skins and also a gigantic marketplace worth real world money around them. However, when it comes to agents and skins, there is a very large difference in terms of how much impact they actually have on a player's game. When it comes to skins, those actually affect your personal view model, and you can see the skins the entire time that you're playing with that single weapon, so it actually does affect and impact your gameplay quite a lot. However, agents don't really have very much impact on your gameplay because they change your player model, not your view model. You don't see your agent's player model through the entire time that you're playing the game, only when you really die or if you see it on another player. The only real way that agents actually impact your gameplay is with only specific agents like Ava, for example, where your voice lines change. And the voice lines only really change for impactful stuff when you're doing things like throwing smoke grenades, where Ava says throwing smoke shield instead of smoke grenade, and this is in a girl's voice, of course. So that's the only real impact that it's going to have on your specific gameplay, and it's just a voice line. No one really cares too much about that, and that's kind of why agents are a little bit confusing. That being said, that means that agents lack one extremely critical value to CSGO gameplay and CSGO market prices that skins do not, and that's physicality and impact. Skins actually impact your gameplay very, very heavily. They impact what your gameplay looks like, they impact the physicality of it, they have float values, wares, they have a whole wide variety of patterns, everything that you can all customize to your wants and play with in-game. Agents are a little bit different in that fact that they don't actually have that much physicality or impact, and that's kind of one of the main reasons why I think that agents are actually not going to be a good investment. Now obviously there is one key factor here to actually touch on, and that's the availability of agents. Obviously if they don't release agent skins in the future in any capacity, the original agents that are released from the Shutterbub operation are clearly going to have high prices simply because of their rarity rather than their actual impact in game. And simply put, that's kind of what it comes down to. If agents aren't going to be very impactful in game, and there's not going to be a lot of physicality associated with them, and they are going to be in large supply, meaning that Valve actually does focus on agents and releases more of them in the future. So if they have a very limited release and these are the only agents that come out, then obviously they can't really have by any stretch of the imagination be good investments because they do not possess any of the real good physicality factors that skins themselves possess. So that's kind of the information that you need to know about them. So basically what I'm saying is if they're going to be more rare, then they could drive up prices and be good investments. And if they're going to be less rare, then they're not really going to be anything to get too hyped over and not really something that you should focus your money towards at all. Keep in mind, you can actually test out yourself how much hype the agents have. All you have to do is look at your own agents in your own inventory and kind of consider to yourself how much impact those actually have on how you feel about your inventory as a whole. Personally, I have a couple agents in my inventory and I don't feel any better about my inventory just because of them. I feel like they don't even exist and I honestly could not care less about having them even though I bought them myself 
deliberately and didn't get them from drops. Oddly enough, there's actually a few YouTubers that I've seen talking about investments and agents and saying that they're going to be good simply because we don't know what's going to happen with them and they could be in short supply. I feel like that's kind of dumb logic to use and, uh, you know, dumb logic to use to hype something up simply because we don't know what's going to happen with it. If someone told you that they didn't know what was going to happen with an outcome and told you that putting your money into it was a good idea, you wouldn't do it because obviously you don't know what's going to happen. You don't have any sort of factors of ideas about the future. So that's why I kind of wanted to lay out the factors for agents being good or bad investments rather than if they actually are or not. And before we move on to cases, I do want to make one last point about agents and that's simply that if the agents don't actually have more releases in the future, and these ones are pretty rare, there is still a chance that they're still not going to be good investments even with a rarity boost, simply because they don't have very much hype at all. In fact, after the Shutter Rip operation came out and the agents were released, I've seen basically zero in the community about them up until patches came out and then that was only a brief short period of hype and then nothing really after that. And yeah, if you're wondering about prices, they've really only fallen the entire operation for every tier of agent, which is, uh, you know, a little bit concerning if that's going to be a precedent for the future. Okay guys, moving on to probably the most controversial aspect in terms of investing in the newest operation, and that is the Shattered Web cases. So the main thing with the Shattered Web cases that has been keeping their price so high for so long is because they're part of a battle pass, which means they are a limited release at the moment, and we don't really know what's going to happen with them in the future. Another reason why I haven't talked about them, because I don't really like talking about speculative stuff. I rather like talking about stuff that we do have a little bit of idea of what's going to happen in the, you know, coming times. So when it comes to cases, TDMA Zeus actually made a video on them, I know, and what I do want to say about that is that I actually haven't watched that video yet. Specifically for this video, I haven't watched his video because I don't want to have any sort of influence off what he's saying, and I want to say my own thoughts on it. Now, the most important sort of overarching factor is obviously going to be supply of cases. The more supply of cases that exist, the lower their price is going to be. That's simple supply and demand economics. The question here is, is Valve going to release them into the drop pool and actually make cases available to more people in a more common format? And obviously that will drive the prices down if it does happen. And if it doesn't happen, then the prices will likely go up quite a lot, just like the Hydra case. What you have to consider here is the Hydra case has basically no demand whatsoever. The main thing with the Hydra case is that it has a bunch of skins in it that aren't really worth opening because of the case's high price, and so a lot of people don't really want the Hydra cases themselves, and the best thing to do is to sell them for buy order on the market, which is actually pretty low. And there are actually a few supply factors of cases that actually hasn't been talked about too much recently, and one of the main ones here is actually that they are a guaranteed drop from the operation. That means that from the operation, every single person that bought the pass does get the guaranteed amount of cases if they complete the operation pass. That means that there's no sort of a rarity factor in terms of what actually gets dropped. It is a guaranteed case. So basically, if you get, for example, a graffiti or a sticker, you have a bunch of different stickers and a bunch of different graffitis that you can actually get. When it comes from the case drops from the operation, that you get from the battle pass, those ones are always going to be a shadow rub case, which means that everybody who did those missions is going to have that shadow rub case. However, on the flip side of that, there's actually been another supply factor as well with these cases, and that's how many people are opening them. Shadow rub cases have obviously been a very popular open because of the new knives that have been released, and obviously with that, there's going to be a lot more people actually opening the cases, which decreases their supply as a whole. I actually had a discussion with somebody about cases recently, and they actually brought a pretty important point into view, and that's going to be the knives themselves. So the knives are all new. The paracord knife is new, the nomad knife is new, the survival knife is new, and obviously the amazing skeleton knife is new. These are all new knives and they are all in this case. That means if this case was to be actually discontinued and wasn't going to be released in the future at all, these knives could be permanently locked to just these cases, which doesn't actually make a lot of sense. These are new knives that were completely new and designed by Valve with a bunch of skins that obviously already exist, but those skins being wrapped onto these specific knives does require them to put a little bit more effort into that. So in terms of a development side of things, the knives are a little bit too high of a development cost to make the case, you know, not actually released in the future in any sort of way. This means that the case does actually have a little bit more of a likeliness to be reached into the drop pool itself, and we can see prices like the Operation Wildfire case, for example, instead of the Operation Hydra case, or the case could be released, obviously, in a different form. It could be a completely different case with new knives in it that are, you know, the same knives from the previous case that we already have, the Shadow Rub case, but these new knives could actually have different finishes, like, for example, Gamma finishes. So, yeah, basically the main point there is that the development cost of making these cases and the development cost of making these knives is a little bit too high for them to simply just discontinue the cases altogether. The Hydra case didn't have any sort of new rare special items that weren't released in future cases, at least 
So that's kind of why it's a little bit odd that they would kind of do that with the shutter web case. It doesn't really make a lot of sense on the development side of things. With that said, I believe there is a higher likeliness of these cases being released into the drop pool rather than simply being discontinued, which is why I think I actually agree with TDM Jesus. Obviously, I haven't watched this video, but that seems to be the actual verdict that it came to based on how the prices of cases are doing. So for my main verdict for investing in the cases themselves, if they're going to be a profitable investment or not, I do believe that there should be a little bit of consideration of risk going on here. I believe a lot of people should consider whether they want to take on the risk of cases dropping in price if they are added to the drop pool or if they don't want to take on that risk and you know kind of just maybe not spend the money and potentially have the cases rise in price later on that they're going to miss when it comes to my personal opinion on this obviously make your own opinion if you want to take on extra risk or not but when it comes to my personal opinion on the cases i think i'm not going to be investing in them simply because i think there is too much of a risk of them being released into the drop pool obviously if they're not released into the drop pool and they are kept as a rare item from this operation itself I think the prices can go up, but I'm not going to be regretting anything simply because of the fact that I could have lost them a lot of money if they're releasing the drop pool. So guys, that's going to be the end of this video. Those are my opinions on investing in the Shadow Road cases and the agents. I don't think they're going to be very fruitful ideas to invest in, and I think some of the YouTubers that have been talking about these have been a little bit sort of misinformed or really haven't been considering some of the overarching problems with investing in these items themselves and are kind of just trying to make pretty big calls to try and hope that it goes right for them. So yeah, I would say they're a little bit too risky to invest in. We don't really know what's going to happen with them. Too much speculation involved here, but obviously make your own opinions about them. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for taking time out of your day to come spend it with me. Make sure you use my Skin Bay link in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications for more videos like this in the future, and getting all the up-to-date investment tips from my channel. And of course, make sure that you like this video if you enjoyed it and it helped you out with your decisions on these items. Make sure you check out my socials links in the description below to my Discord and Twitter. Thank you guys once again for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace.